Glencoe Public Library. Um, we are here today for our first self-care Sunday. We're going to be doing this uh, once a month every month this fall, so October and November we'll have this as well. Um, and the purpose of this stream today is just to do some simple activities that can help us uh, relax, unwind, de-stress. There's a lot going on in the world. Um, it's back to school season. So understandably, a lot of us are stressed and we're looking for some ways to just, you know, relax and hang out. So we're going to get started today by making our own bath salts. Um, and if you're like me, um, you've probably heard of bath salts, um, but weren't totally sure what the purpose of them is, um, which is totally fair. They're a little... Uh, I don't, I don't want to say old-fashioned, old fashioned, but they've been, been around for a while. They're maybe not quite as popular as things like bath bombs are these days. Um, but they are a great way to uh, make your bath like a little extra special. Um, and for me, I tend not to take baths as just a way of like normally cleaning myself. I just take showers, I think, like most people. Um, and bath time is usually reserved for like relaxing. So I did a little bit of research about like what's the deal with bath salts? Why do people have them? Why do people use them? And um, the short version is there's some pretty excellent uh, properties that are in the ingredients that we're going to use today. So one of the primary ones is uh, Epsom salts, which you can actually just take a bath with Epsom salts by themselves. Um, and that's like a pretty relaxing chill bath all by itself, but we're going to be a little extra today because sometimes self-care is about being a little bit extra. And uh, uh, anyway, so Epsom salt has uh, magnesium in it, which helps relax sore muscles. Uh, same deal with sea salt. I don't know about the magnesium, but uh, sea salt can be used as a natural muscle relaxant if you just like chill in some water with sea salt. Um, maybe that's why the ocean is like calming to be in. in. Could be. Um, and then there's also some baking soda in this recipe we're going to use, which is a natural exfoliant, fun fact. Um, in fact, from my reading, it's sometimes too good at an exfoliant, so you don't want to use it on your face or use it too often. Um, and then this recipe also has optional um, essential oils, which are just good smelling stuff. They make your bath smell good. But they're all natural so that's nice um so i'm gonna get started these may or may not be things that you have at home right now and it's cool if you don't have them um we'll leave this video up so that folks can watch it again later and uh follow along if they would like so to get started i am gonna get one cup of epsom salt and hopefully not spill it all over the place because it comes in this gigantic bag. I don't know if you can see quite how giant it is. Um, but I need one cup of that. Got my measuring cups right here. And actually it's probably going to be easier to just use the quarter scoop. You might have wondered why people made you bother adding and subtracting fractions in school, and the answer is so that you can bake and do crafts as an adult. That's basically the only time I've ever had to deal with fraction math. Alright, we've got some Epsom salt. I'm going to seal this big old bag so I don't spill it all over everything. Then next we have some sea salt, um, which is different from, from table salt. salt. I don't, I don't know exactly, exactly how, but it says, says here on this Morton's container that it does not supply iodine, a necessary nutrient, which, which is fine because we're not eating it. So, uh, we, we next need one, one cup of that. There we go. This does kind, kind of feel like baking with all measured, measured cups and such. Baking can be another great form of self-care. If you're a person who likes to bake. If you don't like to bake, then it just becomes stressful. 
just be you, me. You're back up. Oh. I don't know what to do about that. Okay. That's like almost a cup. We're just gonna call it good enough because this isn't actual bacon. So it doesn't have to be that precise. Um, and then last thing is gonna be some baking soda, quarter of a cup of that, which is why I had the quarter cup on hand. Whoop. Try not to get baking soda on your computer mouse, like I just did. It's fine, it'll come off. This is the danger of crafting in front of a computer, but that's okay. I knew what I was signing up for. This is a lot of baking soda. I feel like I usually use like a tablespoon in actual baking. Alright, well some of it fell off the sides, so that's cool. <coughs> I just inhaled a bunch of baking soda, so that seemed <laughs> fine. Um, baking soda does not taste very good, in case you're wondering. Um, in case you were thinking, maybe I should try some baking soda for myself in my life. Um, and the answer is you should not. Um, okay, so now we're going to mix this up. Uh, I will note, oh, I have not yet shared with y'all. Um, there is a PDF that I made to go along with this video program, whatever, today. Um, it's got the recipe for these bath salts. It's got... Uh, some other materials that are connected to what we're going to do next, so um, I'm going to take a second here and post the link to that in the chat. And I'll post it a couple times in case folks join us later and they're interested in it. Um, just a second. There's the chat. And there's the Google Drive link to that recipe, so... If you'd like to do it later, you have it. Um, but anyway, uh, it does not actually say as an ingredient or like thing that you need to make this recipe, a spoon. <laughs> but then it was like, mix it. And I was like, hmm, guess I'm gonna need a spoon. It seems like a slight oversight, but that's okay. We're smart people, we can figure out when to use a spoon. Um, so then the essential oils are optional. Essential, oil, essential oils um, are kind of expensive, so if you don't have them already at home, I would say just skip this step. But I happen to already have this little lavender essential oil uh, lying around, so it says that I should do one to two drops because it's pretty potent. Um, but if you wish for a stronger scent, add another drop. So we're going to get really crazy here, and we're going to do three drops. Ready? One, two, three. I'm telling you. We are getting crazy here at Self Care Sunday. Three whole drops. It smells delicious. I love the smell of lavender. And I'm just gonna mix that in there. So now all our salty baking soda we mixed smells like delicious lavender. Lavender isn't really delicious though. I mean, I guess there are some foods that involve lavender. Like I've had like lavender syrup lemonade or things like that, but. Usually you just smell it, not eat it. Anyway, so now we've got our big mixture here. And we're gonna split it up. So this particular recipe calls for, it's for uh, like layered bath salts. So there's different colors and they'll look really pretty when we're done, we'll put them in layers. Um, you can really do as many layers as you would like. Um, you could do one big layer if you don't feel like going through multiple layers or if you don't have a funnel at home which is an essential part of the multi-layer process um, I am gonna go with four colors today because that's what I'm feeling like but anyway however many colors you decide to go with uh, you'll want to split up your big old mixture evenly into that number of plastic bags so I'm gonna split this up into four plastic baggies here kind of feeling it out as I go because I don't know exactly how much is in here. I guess two and a quarter cups of stuff, but I'm not about to divide that by four. Remember that thing I said about fractions earlier? I, I'm not that good at fractions. We're just gonna 
you know, and we're just going to guesstimate here anyway. Because, again, this is not real baking. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, that's a thing that can be both calming and stressful about baking, is that it's very, like, precise. As opposed to cooking or some other activities where you can kind of fudge the amounts of stuff. Which, weirdly, I don't think you can do when you're making fudge, actually. I think you have to be pretty stick with the recipe on that or the texture gets all messed up. <laughs> that was a terrible joke, but... It got me thinking about fudge, which is yummy and fun to make. Um, maybe we'll do fudge on our next self-care Sunday video. Probably not, because I would find a way to burn down my kitchen live on stream, and that would just not be fun for anyone. Okay, so... Now that I've got my salts divided up into four little baggies here, one, two, three, four, I'm going to add some food coloring. Um, the recipe advises adding only like one or two drops at a time, same as the essential oil. I like bright colors though, so I might add a little more as we go. So I've got pink here. So this is just regular old food coloring um, that you would find at the store. I happen to have some fun, this pink that I just put in and this turquoise one um, are from the library. We have like fun neon ones that we use sometimes for programs. So I'm using those today. I'm doing, I'm picking colors that bring me joy. I like pink. I like teal. Um, my most favorite color is purple. Now I don't have purple uh, food coloring, but I did go to kindergarten, so I know that the red and the blue together are going to make purple if I mix them. So again, these uh, skills from elementary school really helping me out as an adult. Thank a teacher. Because teachers are great. They do important work. Okay, and then my last one, I'm just going to make plain old blue. I like blue also. It makes me think of the sky and the ocean, which are two of my favorite things. Okay, so then we're going to seal these plastic bags, like, really well, because we don't want any salt to escape and get all over, say, our computer mouse or our keyboard <laughs> or our cat or anything else around in your house. Um, seal them up real good. And then once they're all sealed, you're just going to mix them with your hands. Just like shake it up in there. My food dye is getting stuck to the plastic and not the salt, which is less helpful. Alright, well this is why you add a little bit at a time, because as you can see, this does not look very pink at all. So we'll just add a little bit more pink. No big deal. This is your project. Do what you want. You know, I think part of it is because this is a gel type of food coloring, which works a little differently from the regular kind, but that's okay. So yeah, maybe you decide, like, I don't really need my bath salts to be a color. I just want them to smell nice and make my bath nice. And I'll totally do this. It's up to you. Maybe you want to make a whole rainbow of colors and have your bath salts be like super colorful and neon and amazing. Or maybe you like pastels. This one, this one right now is kind of a pastel pink and I kind of like it. So I'm going to go with that. Um, there's still some like weird food coloring blobs happening, but that's life. Um, sometimes there's weird food coloring blobs in life and it's no big deal. So we continue mixing here. We'll see how it goes. Got our teal now. Teal seems to be having the same problem of being that gel kind that kind of blobs up instead of mixing in. Okay, that seemed to work. I just broke up the gel blob with my hands. I'm about to kind of like just this process of grinding up the color into the salt. It's kind of nice. I'm going to level it 
air out so it's easier to mix everything up. Keep an eye on the time. We've got plenty of them. Okay, so that one actually turned out really well. So I'm going to try letting out some air on my pink one and doing a little more hand mixing on that one. See if I can break up some of the color blobs and get it to be a little bit brighter like I do. Now it's starting to look a little bit like Pepto Bismol, but that's okay. I like Pepto Bismol paint, but understandably some people are not wild about it. I once saw a house in Austin, Texas that is like absolutely Pepto Bismol pink head to toe. And I mean like the roof, the siding, the door, the fence, like everything was Pepto Bismol, like, and if you're not familiar with Pepto Bismol, like, it's like the brightest, pinkest pink you've ever seen in your life. Okay, this blue <laughs> and red combo is not giving me purple. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try again with some more uh, dyes. So the moral of the story here is probably don't use gel food coloring if you have another option because regular food coloring seems like it'd probably be giving me less of a hard time right now, but that's okay. All right, let that air out again. And come on, buddy, you can make purple. I believe in you. I believe in your ability to mix red and blue to make purple. And maybe not, maybe we're just gonna end up with blue and purple separate. This just kind of looks like a darker shade of this teal, doesn't it? I actually kind of like that. You know, I once took a mask making class um, with a Swedish gentleman who's a master at the art of Italian Canadia dell'arte masks. And he would say, uh, about our masks that the imperfections are what make it alive. And I feel like in this in this case, like this is absolutely not the color I was going for, but I like it anyway. So I'm gonna go with it. Because sometimes in life, you just have to go with things. Okay. Last one. This one is... Oh, this one's just supposed to be blue. That's right. I'm hoping it turns out like maybe like a baby blue. Again, I'm gonna let the air out. So pro tip, <laughs> once you add your food coloring, uh, make sure you get, get the air out of the plastic bag to make it easier to mix. And see, now I wish I had another warm color. Like if I had done this one red, because then we have two cool and one, uh, two cool colors, two warm colors. Again, going back to our kindergarten color concept. Um, you know, that stuff you did in kindergarten, it's not a bad place to start when it comes to coming up with a self-care routine. Coloring is great, um, paint by numbers, playing with sand um, can, be, can be awfully fun and soothing, calming. Um, obviously there are other things that are, well, I'm not going to say yoga is not kid friendly. Yoga was going to be an example of something adults do, but kids can do yoga too. But a lot of times, things from our childhoods are comforting to us, and that can be nice. So maybe making your favorite recipe from when you were a kid. I've been eating Honey Nut Cheerios a lot lately because they remind me of being a kid. And it's also just a really delicious cereal. This is not a sponsored program by Honey Nut Cheerios. All right, well, I don't know how you can see, but we do have three like different shades of blue here, plus our pink. Um, Actually, now I have an idea for how to layer them. It's different than my original idea. So, the next part of this process requires a funnel. Now, I'm using a fairly wide mouthed bottle here. I'm using uh, like an, a mason jar rather than a bottle bottle. Um, so, as you can see, like there's space here where I could just pour 
the salt directly in if I wanted to, but the funnel is going to give it a lot cleaner look. Um, and you can get funnels at like craft stores and all sorts of places. This one is from, I think, Amazon. Anyway, it's one the library owns. So originally I was just going to have four layers of four colors, but now I'm thinking I'll do a layer of blue then like a third of the pink, then a layer of blue, then like a third of the pink. Or maybe I should start with the pink. No, I'm gonna start with the blue. All right, here we go. I'm gonna pour that in there. Realize you're not at the best angle to see what I'm seeing, but I'll show you at the end how it looks. And then I'm gonna shake it out a little bit to flatten out the salt. Then a little bit of pink here. Drop the pen, don't worry about it. I'm a professional streamer, in case that wasn't very clear. Okay, there's some pink. Then I'm gonna do the next shade of blue. Um, so to use these, I never really explained that. It's pretty simple. You basically just pour some in the bathtub with you the way you would with like putting a bath bomb in or putting bubble bath in just like kind of as you're filling up the tub you're going to want to put some of these salts in and they'll just dissolve and make your bathtub smell yummy and I think give your bathtub some color too. Again I have not tried this recipe in an actual bathtub but I probably will sometime in the near future so I can report back if anyone's interested. Um, ooh, this is actually turning out quite nicely. I'm not going to use all of my teal because I'm running out of space, but... Oh, and I just realized that my bath salt colors kind of match the colors on the Self Care Sunday logo that I printed out here. So that's kind of fun. All right, just gonna pour in one last layer of pink at the very top. So this is also something that makes a really easy gift to give someone. But since today is self-care Sunday, we're gonna make it for ourselves. Um, Cause self-care is not selfish. It's just necessary. It's a way of taking care of yourself, just like it says. And that can be hard to make time for, but it is important to prioritize it as much as you can, which is why self-care Sunday, which is not something I invented, by the way, um, it's something that takes place in all corners of the internet, um, it's why it's a thing, so people can stop, stop and take a minute and take care of themselves. So here is the final results of my bath salts. I really like how they turned out. Um, with the alternating like blues and pink, some kind of the pink is kind of thin in some places more than others, but that's okay. I think it looks really pretty, and I'm looking forward to using them. So, that is our first activity. Um, I'll leave that on camera where we can see it, maybe. Um, our next activity is going to be a guided meditation. Now, I don't know how much those who are watching are familiar with guided meditation, if it's something you do all the time, if it's something you've never done. Um, I picked one, or at least I tried to pick one, that would be suitable for all levels of skill. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and drop the link to that PDF again uh, in the chat. Um, because it has uh, the transcript of what I am about to read to you. So. Uh, anyone has just joined us and doesn't have this link yet, this is a packet that has um, some accompanying information for this stream, including the recipe for the bath salts we just made and the text of this mindfulness uh, practice, if that is helpful to folks, if you want to try it again later, anything like that. So this comes from uh, UCLA. They have a, uh, a whole institute there called the Mindfulness, the Semmel Institute, the Mindness, Mindful Awareness Research. My goodness, I'm going to try that one more time. 
UCLA has the Semmel Institute, which is a mindfulness awareness research center. Um, so they do research about mindfulness as a practice, about its benefits to us. Um, and for anyone who might not know, mindfulness is simply the practice of being in the moment. It has a lot of benefits for our mental health, and that's why it's something that I like to practice semi-regularly. So um, we're going to do this meditation together. I will guide us. Um, and it should take about five and a half minutes or so. So find a relaxed, comfortable position seated on a chair or on the floor, on a cushion. Keep your back upright, but not too tight. Hands resting wherever they're comfortable. Tongue on the roof of your mouth or wherever it's comfortable. And you can notice your body from the inside. Noticing the shape of your body, the weight, touch, and let yourself relax. And become curious about your body, seated here. The sensations of your body, the touch, the connection with the floor, the chair. Release any areas of tightness or tension. Just breathe. Soften. And now begin to tune into your breath, in your body, feeling the natural flow of breath. Don't need to do anything to your breath, not long, not short, just natural. And notice where you feel your breath in your body. It might be in your abdomen, it may be in your chest or throat or in your nostrils. See if you can feel the sensations of breath, one breath at a time. When one breath ends, the next breath begins. Now as you do this, you might notice that your mind might start to wander. You might start thinking about other things. If this happens, this is not a problem. It's very natural. Just notice that your mind has wandered. You can say, thinking, or wandering, in your head softly. And then gently redirect your attention right back to the breathing. So we'll stay with this for some time in silence. Just a short time, noticing our breath. From time to time, getting lost in thought and returning to our breath. Seeing if you can be really kind to yourself in this process. Once again, you can notice your body, your whole body, see it here. Let yourself relax even more deeply. And then offer yourself some appreciation for doing this practice today, whatever that means to you. Finding a sense of ease and well-being for yourself and this day. And that is our mindfulness practice. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know it's something that I 
myself enjoy doing pretty regularly. So if that's something that interests you in our packet, you can find, um, like I said, the text of that specific meditation, but also a link to the Semmel Center where there are other free meditations, both transcripts like the one that you've seen and ones that are actually read out loud for you to follow along. Um, so yeah, I'm going to post that link one more time now for anyone new who may have joined us. Um, because our next activity, as you may have noticed, I've just set down a coloring sheet. Um, now adult coloring has become much more popular in the last couple of years, specifically as a de-stressing activity. And there's lots of variants. There's, you know, traditional coloring and painting by number. There's ones where you can kind of scratch off um, of a, like there's a black page and you, you scratch off the design. Um, there's something called diamond painting I've just heard about. So anyway, um, the reason that coloring can be really wonderful and relaxing is it's a repeated physical activity, right? You're moving your pencil or your crayon or whatever back and forth over and over again. Um, but it's also nice because it's a place where, you know, you, some people might see the lines themselves as limiting, um, creatively as saying you can only color inside these lines inside this box. And to some extent that's true. I mean, that is the purpose of a coloring activity is to be within the lines. Um, you know, it's not a blank piece of paper that you're drawing on, but it's sometimes nice to not have to make so many decisions. You don't have to decide where the lines are going to go. You don't have to decide what the picture is going to be. You know, the only design, the only choice you really have to make is what color you're going to use. And that's pretty low stakes. Um, so coloring can be a really nice way of grounding yourself, of centering yourself. You can do it by itself. Sometimes I like to listen to music or a podcast while I'm coloring. Um, so in your packet that you'll find there in the, uh, the chat link, I included three coloring pages. Uh, these are specifically coloring pages made by the author Jenny Lawson. Um, she is known for uh, a couple of really excellent memoirs that she's written for adults. They're very funny. They deal with mental illness. I highly recommend them. Um, I would say for like age 14 and up, they're a good fit for that. Um, but in addition to her two like book books, she also has a coloring book and she also uh, has a blog, which is actually how she got started as a writer. Um, she's known as the blog, blog S, blog S, um, blog with an E S S at the end to indicate female. Um, her blog is pretty great. It talks a lot about a variety of things from like sort of funny things that happen in her life to, uh, again, a lot of mental health stuff because um, Jenny Lawson has some mental health issues and she's very open talking about that and how it affects her life and such. Um, but anyway, this is a lot of introduction to say that since uh, quarantine, it's not really the right word, but there's, we don't really have a better one. Um, since quarantine, lockdown, whatever you want to call it, uh, started, she has been posting every week a drawing of hers, a coloring page for free for anyone who might want it. And I bring that up so that if, uh, you know, just this drawing or the few that I have included in the packet, which are all ones of hers, you find yourself wanting more of her coloring pages, um, you can easily find them just look up Jenny Lawson coloring pages or Jenny Lawson the blog s and you should be able to find them relatively easily. Um, so one of the things I like about her coloring pages and one of the reasons I chose them for today is they always have um, some kind of text on them. So on this one it says, through calm waters and stormy seas I will find my way. And that seemed like a good message for today and always. Um, so if you'd like to color along at home, you don't have to use the same one I did. You don't even have to use the same. I'm going to clean up some salt here so I don't have salt underneath my coloring page. Um, 
but yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be one of the ones I included. It certainly can be if you want, or if you've got other coloring books at home, coloring sheets, there's lots of places you can go online and download free coloring sheets. Um, I like to use colored pencils, but of course there are all sorts of things you could use instead. Markers, crayons, uh, my mom likes to do her coloring books with gel pens, which is kind of a fun throwback for me because gel pens were all the rage in the early 2000s when I was in grade school. I might need a pencil sharpener for this particular blue. I think I have one nearby, let me see. I have one on the table right next to me, but I'm not seeing it, so that's okay. Oh, wait, now I see it. I'm sure this makes for very exciting stream content. Me finding a pencil sharpener and then knocking down a box. A plus. Um, I think the moral here is that your self-care doesn't have to be perfect. Um, what matters is that you show up for yourself and that you dedicate time, you know, ideally every day, but we all have busy schedules, so even if it's just once a week or once a month, setting aside some time that's just for you, where you can do whatever it is that makes you happy, because you know what, maybe none of these activities that we did today are things you're very into. Maybe you're like, meh, I've done the mindfulness thing, I'm not about it, I don't really like taking baths, I don't really like coloring. Totally cool, there are tons of ways that a person can engage in self-care and throughout this video series which like I said we're gonna have at least two we've at least two more scheduled one in October and one in November um, we're gonna look at you know hopefully a wide variety of ways that a person can participate in self-care um, because it really is different for every person you know like I mentioned yoga earlier I'm pretty into yoga. I've enjoyed yoga since, I mean, I started doing it in around the eighth grade and I won't reveal quite how far in the past that is for me, but um, it is something I've done kind of on and off in my life and I, I'm definitely in an on period right now. I sort of rediscovered yoga um, and it's been really helpful because I'm juggling graduate school and uh, working at the library and planning a wedding and I realize for those of you who are in middle and high school those are probably not very relatable problems other than school but you know there's a lot to juggle when you're in middle and high school right there's school itself there's friendships there's possibly romances um, and all the kind of messiness that sometimes comes with romantic relationships and with friendships too. I mean, those are not always smooth sailing. Um, you know, different extracurriculars, maybe you're involved in sports or band, orchestra, choir, theater. I was in choir and theater and uh, high school um, but I'm sure there's a million other extracurriculars I'm not even thinking of stuff like chess club and robotics club and you know all sorts of things probably and you know it really can be a lot to juggle and to try to figure out what are my priorities you know how am I gonna schedule my time so that I can meet all my commitments. Do I need to say no to some commitments? I mean, that's something I still struggle with as an adult. I've definitely gotten a lot better at it. Um, but it's not always easy to say no to things, especially if they're things that you want to do or if they're things that, you know, someone you are friends with maybe or is in your family, they want you to do it. And you know, you love those people, so you want to help them out with their project or whatever it might be, but you also have to know what your own limitations are. Because if you take on too many responsibilities, inevitably, 
something is going to end up, you know, something's going to end up not being up to scratch. And the thing that ends up suffering oftentimes is our mental health. And that's not great, you know? Um, not to mention this particular year, 2020, has come with all sorts of challenges. I mentioned the beginning of this stream that it's back to school season. It's back to school for me as well as for the middle schools and the high schools. And, you know, depending on where you are watching this, um, you know, you might be in person, you might be online, you might be a mix of things, but regardless of how you're in school, it's a lot different from the way it used to be. And any kind of adjustment can be really challenging, honestly. Um, even something as simple as just a schedule adjustment can really require you to kind of recalibrate your brain and it can be stressful for quite a while trying to adjust and, and get used to things and you know it doesn't help when certain things are up in the air you know you don't know if the style of schooling you're doing now is going to be what you're doing all semester or if something might change and then you'll have to readjust again so you know it just seems like a time more than ever where it really pays off to take some time for self-care. Again, whatever that means to you. Some other things that I personally enjoy are going for walks outside. That can really help with the feeling of being kind of cooped up or cramped up uh, while we're mostly trying to stay indoors to, just to, stay, blah, 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 to stay safe. Um, So yeah, any kind of, you know, socially distant, safe outdoor activity like walking or even just sitting outside in the sunshine can be really beneficial because of all that great vitamin D you get from the sun. Of course, remember to wear sunscreen. Um, but I like to read outside. Um, of course, I'm a librarian, so I'm big on reading, but, you know... Even if you don't like to read, maybe there's other activities you like to do outside. Maybe there's some sports that you can play, or some people like running. Um, I'm not a big runner myself, but I hear that it can have great mental health benefits as well as physical health benefits. So if that's an option for you, it's another great way to get outside. Um, pets are really wonderful if you have a pet. Um, a dog can be... A great excuse to go outside or I have cats so they're indoor cats they don't really do much outside the house um, they don't really do much inside the house either they just kind of hang out most of the day and then sometimes they get energetic and want to play but uh, you know being around furry friends can be good for our health or even non furry friends I mean uh, I have a turtle as well and you know turtles unlike cats and dogs aren't really you can't really play with them, but, like, they don't even really like being pet or touched. But I love watching him swim around his tank. Um, and watching fish swim around their tanks can be really kind of zen, too. Um, so like I said, all sorts of options for self-care. It's really about what you find helpful, what you find healing. You know, if you're trying to force yourself into something like, oh... You know, yoga is supposed to be really good for me, so I'm going to keep forcing myself to do yoga even though I hate it. Like, that's not, it's not going to help you out as much as, you know, just doing something you enjoy. So it's not about what the self-care looks like to others. Um, it's all about how it is for you. Um, and sometimes that takes some... Um, experimentation, some practice, some time, you know, um, a lot of times you, you know, stumble along with one or two activities that you think are helpful, and then maybe you find something else, um, you know, and it's worth it to try a lot of things, and some of the things you try, you're gonna go, eh, I'm not really about that, and then, 
some things you try you might be really excited about. Um, so that's kind of, that's just kind of true for activities in life, but especially in self-care, it's important to pay attention to, you know, how does this activity make me feel? Like I said, for me, I find coloring really soothing and relaxing. But there's some folks who would say, you know, this is either really boring to me or it just feels too restrictive and I'd rather do something more generatively creative, such as, you know, drawing or writing or composing music, whatever. And to that I say, great. Um, music can be another wonderful form of self-care, whether it's just listening to music that you enjoy or... Um, if you play any kind of instrument, um, I myself have played the violin since I was very young, and so uh, picking up my violin every now and again can be a really nice self-care activity. And part of what's nice about that for me is that it kind of has a built-in mindfulness component where in order for me to really play music and play it well, I have to be very focused on what I'm doing and not thinking about, oh, I'm worried about this assignment or I'm worried about, um, you know, this work project or something, um, this friendship, whatever. You really can't think about that while you're playing the violin or you're going to make a lot of errors and not really have an effective practice. And so for me, that's a great self-care activity both because I love to make music and because it has that built-in mindfulness element. Uh, the same is true for me with singing. Um, I love to sing, whether it's like formally sitting down at a piano and practicing or just like belting it out with the radio um, or singing in the shower. And uh, again, with that one, you know, singing inherently slows down your breathing. Like you have to focus on you're breathing and you have to take big deep breaths in order to move the air through your vocal cords enough that you can um i just realized that i think that this stream is still set to pokemon <laughs> uh that's fine <laughs> sorry random interruption um anyway i was just saying um Right, singing requires regulating your breathing, and a lot of meditation and mindfulness uh, involves involves controlling or at least noticing your breathing. Um, I was also going to say one of the fun things for me about coloring as a self care activity is like just the color itself, right? Like when I started here. I just had a plain black and white sheet of paper with some images on it and now I have, you know, like I've just colored the center part, but even so, like it already looks so pretty and fun. Um, and that's something I like about coloring, it's just the gradual introduction of color to the page and it's a very, like, affordable activity I guess. Like, all you really need is something to color and something to color with. And that can be, like, I have some sort of, these are, like, artist quality pencils, um, which I got from someone who was cleaning out their craft supplies and they didn't want them anymore, and I said, I'll take those. Um, <laughs> so, but it doesn't have to be, like, fancy artist quality colored pencils, you know, it can just be, like your Crayola pencils you have left over from fifth grade or whatever, um, or your gel pens if you grew up in the early 2000s like me. Um, and my pencil broke, so good thing I found that sharpener earlier. Um, and then in terms of coloring pages, you know, there's a million coloring books that you can buy. You can find them online um, or in bookstores um, and other stores probably, but bookstores are where I feel like I see them the most. Um, but you can also just Google, like, free coloring pages, and there's tons of free ones online. Like I said, I am partial to these Jenny Lawson ones, both because of the text she includes, 
you know, it helps that she's a professional writer, so she usually has some good text. But also, I like the complexity of them. I find that if a coloring page is, like, too simple, it doesn't hold my attention for very long. Whereas some of these more complex ones I might do over the course of, like, several days. And so that way it becomes a self-care activity for longer. Um, if anyone wants to drop into the chat ideas that they have for what they do for self-care, um, you are welcome to do so. Um, and like I said, we are going to keep doing these um, one Sunday a month uh, in October and then again in November. And we'll see how it goes. Um, this is going to be up on our YouTube channel as well. There'll be a playlist of all the Self Care Sunday videos. So if you can't watch them live, absolutely no worries. You will be able to watch them again later. Um, and like I said, we're going to do different activities each week. So it won't always be bath salts and coloring pages and meditation. It'll be a whole host of other things. Um, and if you have ideas or suggestions, um, again, you can pop them in the chat now, or if you're watching this later um, on YouTube, I believe we have comments disabled on the children's YouTube, so you won't be able to drop a comment there, but you can email the library um, at, actually, probably just email me directly. I am jbond, B-O-N-D, at glencopubliclibrary.org. So if there's something you want to see in, uh, in Self Care Sunday, if you're like, I really love making slime or something. Um, I personally hate making slime, but I know it's very popular. It might be a, like a littler kid thing could be that our middle and high schoolers are like over slime or it could be that you're not you could be like I'm still all about slime I want to make slime every day um, so if I hear that I will say great I will get past my personal dislike of slime and we can do slime um, but anything else eat too like um, I don't know if they, you have book recommendations favorite books you like to read to relax I know that right now and I don't know how long it'll be up but the library does have a display of um, what we call light reads, so stories that aren't too serious and heavy um, in our YA section um, for folks to pick up to read as self-care. Um, can't believe I haven't mentioned reading yet. I guess I did. I mentioned reading outside, but um, reading can be a great form of self-care. Watching favorite TV shows or movies can be. Now I'm trying to name things that are available at the end your local library. Um, if you've struggled to read during the pandemic, which is something I know I've experienced, um, just because so much of your brain is focused on so many other things from this crazy new world that sometimes it can be hard to focus on words on a piece of paper, um, I highly recommend audiobooks. Uh, we have lots of audiobooks available for free through the library um, using two services. One is called Overdrive, the other is called Hoopla, and if you'd like more information on either of those services, um, there's some information on our website or you can always call or use our uh, chat function to get in contact with someone from the library. We can hopefully give you some help on uh, how to check out some of our great ebooks and e-audiobooks. Um, podcasts are another thing in the realm of like something to listen to. Um, of course, I'm blanking on ones that I really enjoy. Science Versus is a nice one because it's all about like it's sort of the audible, ver the like audio version of. Mythbusters in a way where they take an idea and they sort of like hit it against actual science and say like is this really how this is or is it not um, so that's a fun one that's good for kind of all ages um, I'm sure there are other like good I listen to pop culture happy hour from NPR a lot because uh, that's a podcast that talks about um, 
popular culture, as the title suggests, so they'll do reviews of movies or TV shows, things like that, and I like that one because I can always count on it to be kind of not positive necessarily because they don't always like the things they review, but I can always count on it to be sort of light and not too serious, you know? It's not going to be about, you know, very sad, upsetting things in the news. It's going to be about, like, was this movie any good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or, like, uh, what about that new Taylor Swift album, you know? Um, so, yeah. And, you know, sometimes we don't think of those things as being self-care. We think just, like, oh, these are my podcasts I listen to when I'm feeling down or... You know, this is my creative outlet that I have, whatever that might be. And uh, I think it can help sometimes to reframe those activities as self-care because, you know, for me, I can easily push aside, I find myself pushing aside things that seem quote unquote not productive, right? I'm like practicing my violin isn't productive, doing yoga isn't productive because it doesn't involve you know, completing a task with a deadline, but if you start to think of it as self-care and you start to think of self-care as not optional but necessary, because it is, um, you know, I think it's e it becomes easier to give yourself permission to say, okay, I'm going to spend an hour drawing or doing cross-stitch or, you know, taking the dog for a walk or whatever it is, uh, taking a bath. That's another great option that, I, you know, our first segment kind of focused on. How to up your relaxing bath game. And there are tons of, you know, things you can make yourself, like the bath salts that we made, or products you can buy that will make your bath, you know, smell nice and will do nice things for your skin. Um, just so many options. But the point is you know, take some time for self-care, and so we're going to be here to help you come up with ways to do that, and, you know, if two o'clock on Sundays is a good time for you, then this can be an hour of your week that you set aside uh, just for self-care. So we are coming up on three o'clock of our hour-long stream from two to three. As you can see, I've made some progress on my coloring. Obviously it's not done. Like I said, I tend to choose more complex pictures that take me uh, some time to finish, but I'm pretty happy with how it started. Um, and I'm going to drop the link to our PDF one last time um, into the chat so that if you want access to that PDF, uh, you can view it. I believe you can download it from that link also. Um, and we will be back, in fact, I, sorry, back to that link. I'll probably post that as well to our Twitter, um, if you'd like to get it that way. And then I'm going to double check the dates of our next two uh, self-care Sundays. So if you're interested, you'll know when to tune in. You can also find that information uh, on our library website, glencolibrary.org. Um, the calendar feature will have information about all of our wonderful programs that we have for all ages. So next month in October, we will have our Self-Care Sunday on the 11th, and in November, it will be on November 8th. So that's going to be the second Sunday of each month. Um, and hopefully we will see you back here. It'll be at the same time, 2 o'clock each Sunday. And um, I hope you enjoyed our stream and I hope to see you back here next time.